I am going to continue to work as an urbanist, uh, both in this city and across, across Canada and in other places in the world, uh, advancing urbanism. And in many ways, that is about equality. It's about a progressive politics. It is about sustainability. It's about all those things that interface. The beauty of being a planner and also the problem with being a planner is that it is about being a generalist. And that was actually what I loved about becoming a planner. I studied philosophy and English in my undergrad. And when I was doing so, uh, this is actually good advice for us as we think about our daughters right now. <laughs> as I was doing so, when I got to the end of my first year, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I wanted to go into law. And I wasn't sure what my major should be. And I called up my mom and I said, Mom, I don't know what I want to do. And what really, what 18-year-old what really knows what they want to do. And my mom said to me, well, well, sweetheart, uh, and back then phones really were like that. Uh, she said, well, sweetheart, um, do you think you're going to want a job someday where you'll need to think critically? And of course, I said, yes. Do you think communication skills will be important? And I said, well, of course. And she said, well, then just, you know, pick the two courses that you got, you know, pick the courses that you got your highest grade in and run with them. And that was philosophy and English. And she was absolutely right that as a bedrock of foundation for engaging in um, a discourse about our world and our society, those, that was a really great foundation. It wasn't until later that I discovered planning as really being a mechanism for being able to talk about our world and design our world. And within that, there have been a whole variety of different things that I've been able to touch on. And that's reflected in the types of things that I speak about um, to various audiences. So transit, I have an expertise in transit and transit planning and how you build a sustainable community and an equitable community around how you design a city for sustainable transportation in the future. Uh, heritage planning, um, just outside the door here, the Queen Street looks the way it does because many years ago when condos were kind of tumbling throughout our entire city, you can put a condo almost anywhere in this city. We were engaged by the City of Toronto, this is almost 15 years ago now, to create the Queen Street Heritage Conservation District, which runs from University Avenue to Bathurst, and it was the first commercial heritage conservation district in Canada. And when it was done, a lot of firms didn't even bid on the work because they didn't believe that there was any kind of heritage character to Queen Street. And we identified the heritage character as being about the pedestrian nature of the street, the scale of the street. And the only reason that you don't see office towers or condos tumbling all the way along Queen Street is because there was an intentional policy framework put in place to ensure that wasn't the case, to protect the character of the area. Uh, so that's the kind of thing as a generalist that I, I did as well. Very different from transit planning. It's about the character and design um, of an area. Uh, 